Before we turn to the next item of business, I wish to make a statement. At this morning's Bureau meeting, James Kelly, the Labour business manager, expressed concern at the announcement made this morning to the media and not to the Parliament by the Cabinet Secretary for Health, Wellbeing and Sport on funding to tackle delayed discharge. I asked the Minister for Parliamentary Business to investigate the matter and to come back to me. I have subsequently spoken to the Minister and I find the response to be unsatisfactory. All members will be aware that the Good Practice Guidance on Announcements by the Scottish Government states that major policy and announcements should always be made to the Parliament. They should not enter the public domain through any other route. Whilst I accept that the Government is entitled to exercise its judgment on making announcements, this was clearly an announcement of significant public policy and should have been made to the Parliament in the first instance. In addition, the issue of delayed discharges has been of great concern to many members over the last few months. I therefore consider it to be a gross discourtesy to this Parliament and its members that the announcement was not made here first. When a similar situation arose last year, I indicated that it was my expectation that the Government should reflect on its actions. I am very disappointed that this does not appear to have happened. I would therefore ask the Government to reflect on its actions today and the consequences for Ministers that will flow from similar actions in the future. I also advise the Government that if a request for an emergency question had been made to me this morning, I would have accepted it. And I would have obliged the Cabinet Secretary to be here in this chamber, in person, regardless of her other commitments, be in no doubt that I will do so in the future. We now move to the next item of business, which is topical questions. Question number one, Alex Johnson. To ask the Scottish Government what limits it will place on its contribution to the V&A project in Dundee. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. The Scottish Government has committed an additional £10 million to the V&A project, bringing its total capital contribution to £25 million. We are also in discussion with the Council about proposals for a growth accelerator model for the wider Dundee waterfront area, anchored by the V&A. In taking forward these discussions and the management of the project itself, the Scottish Government expects Dundee City Council and Dundee Design Limited to ensure all steps are taken to deliver the project on time and to budget under the fixed price contract proposed. Alex Johns. While I accept that there inevitably are issues of commercial confidentiality, will the Minister uh, take the opportunity today uh, to, on behalf of our Government, create some transparency around the process which has led to this announcement? And will she also uh, pass comment on the fact that the City of Dundee Council itself was unable to inform any member of its opposition uh, during this process as to what was going on? Secretary. Uh, in terms of transparency, it's quite clear from the Scottish Government's point of view in terms of uh, budget scrutiny that we have laid out uh, our proposals and we are doing so again here today in Parliament. In terms of commercial confidentiality, that has meant there's been a period, a series um, of discussions taking place with the contractors to make sure that we can get uh, the lowest price. I think there's been quite a key uh, driver to reduce prices but not to compromise on the, 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 the project itself. Um, as part of that, there's been ongoing discussions between ourselves and Dundee City Council. In terms of um, Dundee City Council's transparency to its own, um, in terms of its, itself as an authority to uh, its councillors and to the wider Dundee pub public, uh, the papers that were uh, produced uh, on Friday announced what, those, uh, what that figure now is. Uh, but there has been a period, as I think everybody expects, to make sure that there's been robust discussion to make sure that what we have is a, a certainty of a fixed price uh, solution. And in terms of the confidence going forward, I I think that's something that we should welcome, but absolutely I agree with Alec Johnson that transparency is important with uh, co contracts and in proposals, and uh, that's why I'm happy to answer the questions here today. Alex Johnson. Can the Cabinet Secretary give an unequivocal guarantee at this stage that the money that has been made available to support the project will be adequate to ensure that the people of Dundee get the Victoria and Albert Museum that they've been promised for so long? Well, it's quite clear that the, the people of Dundee um, are very enthusiastic. 
about the prospects of uh, the V&A and what it can mean for the wider regeneration um, of Dundee. In terms of the certainty that he's looking for, that's been part and parcel of the discussions that were taking place in relation to the contract and trying to make sure we could get the best fixed price that was possible. Certainly the council could with the contractors and that's why in terms of committing Scottish Government money, we have been making sure during that period that we're confident that the proposals and the figures, which are obviously uh, a significant increase on what was the original estimate before tenders went out, could be realised and give people confidence that this project can go ahead and indeed will be successful. Claire Baker. Um, thank you, President Officer. Um, yesterday, when I met with the Director of Dundee V&A um, in Dundee, in his office, which is opposite a building site, I should have actually at that time been on a tour of the building if we looked at the original um, timescales. What we've seen is escalating costs and continuous delays, and there needs to be transparency and accountability. And I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary must also have come, uh, concerns over how this project has developed. So, therefore, will the Scottish Government agree to calls for an inquiry into the rising costs of the building so, we know, so we, that we know who knew what, when? Well, it's quite clear that uh, Dundee Council itself will be reviewing um, the process to date. In terms of uh, the project, uh, this is a project that has to be right. Um, it's an ambitious project. Uh, it has also been part and parcel of bringing, for example, the UNESCO City of Design uh, to Dundee. And it's important that this project does go ahead. The issues I have with an inquiry would be any uncertainty and delay. And I'm sure um, the cabinet, the, 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 my, my colleague Claire Laker will be familiar with concerns over many years where some opposition members have, in their attitude and behaviour, caused uncertainty and uncertainty is what we don't need at this time. We need certainty, particularly when we're attracting additional private, private sector funding and indeed she'll be aware that it's a heritage lottery funding decision to be made in the next few days and I'm sure she'd want to make sure that there's confidence given to the heritage lottery funding that we are all behind the V&A. George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. I welcome the additional funding from the Scottish Government for this regeneration project, which is important in cultural terms, not just to Dundee, but to Scotland as a whole. Could the Cabinet Secretary outline the benefits she expects the v &A to bring to the local and national economy? Cabinet Secretary. Well, quite clearly, as, as I said, the iconic uh, anchor of the v &A will have a, a significant development for the, the waterfront development as a whole in terms of the economic impact. That's jobs, a time when obviously that city in particular, we want to make sure that it can benefit from uh, cultural-led regeneration, uh, as many other areas have as well. But he, George Adam is, is right to, to, to look at the actual culture offering itself in terms of uh, Dundee as a, a city of creativity, of innovation. Uh, I just mentioned the UNESCO City of Design that's been awarded to Dundee, very few in the world, and indeed that is something that we should celebrate. But also in terms of the content, it allows us to showcase our industrial heritage and in terms of how we can look at our innovation design in lots of different areas, not just in the culture offering, but the heritage offering, but also in terms of how innovation has driven that city and indeed continues to drive our economy as well. Jane Amara. The Cabinet Secretary has proposed that the remaining sums will be made up through a borrowing model, the growth accelerator model. The Cabinet Secretary also knows that Dundee City Council is a council with very high levels of deprivation, and so these repayments will need to be made over many years that will affect budgets long into the future. Can she give uh, the Chamber any indication about how the risk will be shared in the growth accelerator model between the Scottish Government and Dundee City Council? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we've made clear that the growth acceleration model, which has initially been announced for the St James Quarter here in this city, is one that we will be in act and we are in active discussions with the Dundee City Council about. I, I hear what she's saying in terms of um, Dundee and areas of deprivation, but that's exactly why we need to have the economic regeneration of Dundee, of which the, the body and the, and the, and the, the waterfront uh, is a significant uh, part and of which the V&A is a vital part. And in terms of, of the contribution, I've made clear, as I have repeatedly, and the member will have heard me, that we stand behind the V&A and we stand behind that project. And in terms of that discussion, I can't give the detail. Uh, that's still in discussion in relation to the growth accelerator model. Uh, but we want to make sure, not just in this, but in other areas, I I know from my portfolio and in support for Dundee that we make sure uh, that Dundee uh, not only gets its uh, fair share of resources, but in many respects is doing far better than other areas as well. Question number two, Alison McInnes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what assessment it has made of the needs for support following the fire at the Peterhead Fish Processing Plant. Cabinet Secretary, Richard Lockhead. 
Many members will have seen the images of the devastating fire at the North Bay Processing Factory in Peterhead, which was ablaze for more than 10 hours. At its peak, 10 fire units and several specialist crews were on site to stop the flames from spreading to canisters containing ammonia and, of course, to bring the, play, the blaze under control. But thankfully, no one was injured. North Bay Pelagic is one of the largest fish factories in Scotland, a major employer with around 120 full-time staff and 100 temporary staff. The fire has destroyed the processing plant and production line, but the company has said that it intends to rebuild the plant as quickly as possible. Indeed, when I spoke to the company today, they reaffirmed that intention. However, it is imperative that we all pull together to get the company up and running again. Scottish Enterprise and Aberdeenshire Council are already in close contact with them, and a multi-agency task force is convening this Friday in Aberdeen to further establish what level of support the company may require from the public sector to enable the business to continue in the short and longer term. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that um, answer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that North Bay Pelagic is one of the most important fish processing facilities in the country, and this is a crucial time of year, of course, the start of the mackerel season. Ian Gatt, Chief Executive of the Pelagic Fishermen's Association, has suggested that this incident could lead to buyers and fishermen looking to other ports, even to Norway, to do business. Has the Cabinet Secretary had discussions with local stakeholders about how to prevent this occurring? Uh, indeed, and can he help the company find temporary accommodation, for example, um, so that we limit the impact that this incident has on the local economy. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, as, as the member can imagine, the, the Scottish Government is very keen to help in any way we can to help limit the impact on the local economy. We very much recognise the importance of, of the factor in that context. Scottish Government officials will be involved in the task force that has been set up this week. Clearly, I will have to wait for feedback from the various agencies and the local community and the local authority, as well as the company, to understand how best the Scottish Government can intervene. But we have instructed all the public agencies to take this matter very, very seriously indeed, not least to try and give some comfort to the staff who remain in employment uh, with full-time pay, uh, that uh, everything has been done to secure their future. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, the Minister uh, has helpfully referred to the local economy. In particular, has there been any contact with other businesses in Peterhead and beyond to see what the knock-on effects are and to see what government and others can do to assist? Cabinet Secretary. I can assure Mr. Stevenson that is one of the issues that will be discussed at the task force meeting this week, because we are aware that, of course, not only is this about the factory itself, which was a significant employer in Peterhead, but many other suppliers relied on that company uh, for their own business uh, as well. So there will indeed be a knock-on uh, impact. It's also worth saying that other pelagic businesses uh, in the area have been in contact with North Bay to offer support. I think we should welcome that and, and thank them for doing that. And of course, there's a lot of effort by the local community to rally around the staff, that particular business and the other businesses affected. So I can assure Stuart Stevenson will pay very close attention to knock on impact to other businesses in the locality. Sarah Boyack. Can I welcome the establishment of the task force because I think that will be hugely important for the fishing industry but also the knock on in terms of uh, local economic development. Can I focus on the issue of the regeneration opportunity that could come from rebuilding the factory? Has the uh, Cabinet Secretary uh, been in discussion with Aberdeenshire about the regeneration impact of getting on the ground fast with a replacement uh, facility? Cabinet Secretary. Well, Sarah Boya raises a good point in terms of the role of Aberdeenshire Council and as you can imagine given the intention of the company to rebuild the factory as soon as possible that will require the cooperation of Aberdeenshire Council in terms of planning permission and other permissions and indeed if other public agencies are also involved in that process I'd be very keen for them to expedite the process uh, where possible so again that is part of our thinking and moving forward because we want these people to have a job for the future as well as other businesses that rely on North Bay for, for business to, to have that business in the future uh, as well. There will be wider issues that do arise out of this. I should mention, in the context of some of those questions, that whilst the pelagic boats would normally be out at sea and landing fish to be processed, which would have created a problem, as you can imagine, with the, the time of year this fire occurred, because of the poor weather, the supplies weren't being landed to the extent they normally would be. So that particular problem perhaps wasn't as bad as it could have been if, if the factory... Um, of course, it had all that stock there. Uh, so there may be wider issues to come out of this. We'll be looking at in detail as well. Thank you. That ends topical questions. We now move to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion number 12095 in the name of Alex Neal on tackling inequalities. I'll give a few moments for members to change their seats.